welcome to this clinical skills video. Today we are going to be focusing on blood cultures. The objectives of this video are to provide you with a brief overview and framework for taking blood cultures following the UHL guidelines. We will also direct you to further resources which contain more detailed information. To aid your learning, we will be breaking this process down into four separate stages. Stage 1 involves obtaining consent from the patient. When you enter the patient environment, you must decontaminate your hands, introduce yourself and identify the patient using full name, date of birth and hospital number. This should be done by checking the patient wristband against an official hospital document such as a blood culture request form. You can then move on to gaining informed consent. In order to do this, you should provide the patient with a simple explanation of what you would like to do and why. Explain that you will use a small needle to take a blood sample to check for the presence of an infection. You should also describe the potential risks, for example bleeding and hitting other structures, along with the benefits, such as aiding the diagnostic process. After this, check the patient understanding and ask the patient if they are happy for you to continue. Once you have gained consent, you should make sure that you are safe to proceed by inquiring about the patient's relevant medical and drug histories. This includes any allergies the patient may have, particularly in relation to the blood culture equipment, for example latex. You should also ask if the patient has had blood taken before and whether they have a needle phobia. Check contraindications for using a particular arm, such as previous chest surgery, loss of sensation or an AV fistula. With blood cultures, it is imperative to check the patient travel history within the last three months and inquire about certain blood-borne infections as these may be deemed high-risk samples. More information on this section can be found in the workbook accompanying this video or in the UHL blood culture taking policy. Stage 2 requires you to gather the equipment for this procedure. The following items are needed for taking blood cultures. Trolley, hand sanitizer, inco pad to protect the patient environment, sharps bin, high-sided plastic tray, two sets of non-sterile gloves and apron, one for cleaning your trolley and tray, the other as part of your personal protective equipment at the patient bedside. You may require goggles if you deem it to be appropriate. Tape, blue blood culture collection pack. The contents of the blood culture collection pack consists of a blue capped aerobic culture bottle, a maroon capped anaerobic culture bottle, a blue sticker for documentation, chloroprep for decontaminating skin, chlorhexidine wipe for cleaning the blood culture bottles, sterile gauze, disposable tourniquet, and a collection set including the butterfly needle. Stage three is performing the procedure itself. This video will demonstrate how to gather the equipment seen in stage 2 and correctly take blood cultures using the collection set. For the purposes of this video we will start with a clean trolley and tray. Our videos on venipuncture and cannulation demonstrate this cleaning process. Once your trolley and tray are cleaned, decontaminate your hands using the WHO 7 stage hand washing technique. This must be used every time you decontaminate your hands. Gather the equipment onto the trolley, making sure that there is a sharp spin to hand. Do not put the unopened equipment in the tray at this point. Open the blood culture pack and arrange your equipment in the tray, ensuring all key parts are protected. Check the expiry date on the blood culture bottles. There is a barcode that must not be removed. Also check for contamination which is indicated by a yellow discoloration on the bottom of the bottle. There is a milliliter scale on the side of the bottle to help you take the correct amount of blood. Repeat this process for the other bottle. Remove the rest of the contents of the blood culture collection bag checking the expiry dates of the equipment when appropriate.
Once you have done this, decontaminate your hands and proceed directly to your patient. At the patient's bedside, decontaminate your hands and reconfirm the patient's identity against the blood culture request form. Make sure that the patient is happy for you to proceed and position them so that they are comfortable, ensuring your equipment and sharp spin are within easy reach. Apply a disposable tourniquet to the patient's arm and palpate for a suitable vein. Once you have located the vein, release the tourniquet. Remove the chloroprep applicator from its packaging and squeeze until the inner tube breaks. This releases the chloroprep solution. Clean the proposed puncture site in a hash formation and allow to air dry for 30 seconds. Dispose of the chloroprep into your sharps bin. Decontaminate your hands and remove the plastic caps from the culture bottles. Clean the newly exposed bottle tops with the chlorhexidine wipe for a minimum of 15 seconds each and allow to air dry. Open the collection set ensuring the key parts are still protected. Partially open the sterile gauze and remove a strip of tape in preparation for use later. Decontaminate your hands and apply an apron and non-sterile gloves. Reapply your tourniquet to distend a vein. Do not repalpate the cleaned area of skin. Take your collection set and remove the plastic sheath from the winged needle. Apply traction below and to the side of the proposed puncture site to help immobilise the vein. Advance the needle, bevel up, into the vein. Once the needle has punctured the vein, you can release the traction on the patient's arm. Whilst immobilising the needle with one hand, take the aerobic blood culture bottle and pierce the septum using the adapter cap. It is important to fill the aerobic bottle first as there will be air within the collection set. Hold the bottle upright and collect 10 millilitres of blood. Remove the aerobic bottle and repeat the procedure with the anaerobic bottle. Remove the anaerobic bottle and release the tourniquet. Without pressure, apply the sterile gauze to the puncture site. Withdraw the needle and pull the wings up to resheath it. Unscrew the adapter cap and put the needle immediately into the sharp spin. You can now apply pressure directly over the puncture site. Use a piece of tape to secure the dressing. Remove your gloves and apron. Decontaminate your hands and turn your attention to the blood culture bottles. Label the bottles at the patient's bedside. Place them into the request form bag. Place this into the blue blood culture bag and seal it. A biohazard bag must be used for samples from high-risk patients. Remember, if your attempt at blood culture is unsuccessful, you should restart the whole process from the beginning. Never reinsert the same needle into a patient. You can have a maximum of two attempts and then you must ask another colleague to perform the procedure. Stage 4 covers the aftercare of your patient. Once the culture bottles are in the bag, thank the patient and make sure that they are comfortable. Tell the patient that if they begin to experience any bleeding, pain, or signs of infection, such as redness or swelling, then they should notify a member of staff. Before leaving the patient area, you should recheck the puncture site and decontaminate your hands. 
Document what you have done in the patient notes using the blue sticker found in the blood culture bag and inform a member of staff if appropriate. Clear up any remaining equipment, ensuring that the trolley and tray are clean for the next user. This completes the blood culture video. Accompanying this, there is a workbook with additional information. We hope you now feel more confident in performing blood cultures and wish you the best of luck.